uh, in the last class actually we were discussing from chapter 14 where one of the descendant of Dhruva Maharaj known as Anga for the benefit of the entire kingdom he began to perform a fire sacrifice but at the end of that none of the devatas are coming forward to accept the oblations <clears throat> Then the king asked, inquired from the Brahmanas who are performing the sacrifice, what was the reason for that? And the Brahmana said that, my dear king, in this life you have not done any sin, but in your previous life you have performed one sin. As a result of that, you have not begot a son. And hence, none of the devatas came forward to accept the oblations from you. So now, you should perform a ignya for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu, in which Lord Vishnu will fulfill your desire for having a son, as well as your desire to bring prosperity for the entire kingdom. So with that instruction, with the permission of the king, then the Brahmanas performed a special sacrifice. Sa Vipra Anumato Raja Grihitva Anjali Anudanam Anjali Naudanam Avagraya Avagraya Mudayukta Prada Patnya Udaradi. So, with the permission of the king, the sages performed a special sacrifice. As a result of that, the Ignya personified appeared from that Ignya with a pot of sweet rice. The king accepted that sweet rice and with the permission of the Brahmanas, he smelled it and gave it to his wife. So, so that the wife having eaten, uh, after eating that sweet rice will become mother. That was the only uh, thing. So here it is said that Udaradi. So Udaradi indicates the king is a wise person. He knows what to do, what not to do. And also Sri Prabhupada writes that Udharadi indicates that the king was very liberal. So, since the king was Udharadi, very liberal, the Supreme Lord orchestrated a wonderful events so that the king will come back home back to God very quickly. So, that is what, that's how Prabhupada writes. What is going to happen in the future? He is indicating with the word Udharadi. So Prabhupada quotes one verse from Bhagavad Gita like Dadami Buddhi Yogam Tam Yenama Upantite. So the Supreme Lord will give him the necessary intelligence by which he can come to spiritual world. So what was that Udharadi will be known later on in this chapter. So now next in the 30th verse, this was the where we stopped last week. Tatam Pumshavanam Rajani Prasya Vai Pratyuradade. Garbam Kale Upavrutte Kumaram Sushuve Praja. So, with the permission of the king, the queen accepted the sweet rice. Eventually, she became mother of his son, and the son was born. So, now the problem starts. Son is born, but born with the qualities of uh, the maternal grandfather. Sabala Eva Purusho. Mata Maham Anuvrata Adar Maam Shodbhavam Murtyum Tena Bhavat Adarmika. Since Sunita is coming from the lineage of Adarma, she is the daughter of Murtyu, somehow King married her. So, as a result of that, the son who was born carried forward the qualities of the Adarma. Because of false on the mother's side, he was religious, Adarmika. But because of Arising from the sacrifice performed to Lord Vishnu, which is performed by the father's material attachment, the son would become beneficial to the father since he gave rise to Prutu and thereby increase the fame of the family. So though the king performed this idea with good intentions to have a good son who can carry forward the lineage, but since the mother was coming from the lineage of other man, he appeared with the qualities of Mata Maha, the qualities of the maternal grandfather who is coming in the lineage of Adharma, Mustyu. And thus, he will be highly religious. But since the king is very 
had uh, very much renounced very much detached and very much devo very much devoted to supreme lord and his devotional service will be born in the form of his grandson prithu that will be mentioned in the uh, that will be described in the future chapters so that was the condition hare krishna prabhu ah uh, yes madhuj prabhu ji what decides ki whether the person gets some other qualities or father's qualities i mean in rugveda it is said that matru jati pitru lakshan generally the mm-hmm. son will have the mentality of the mother and mother's uh, parents okay the daughter will have the qualities of the father and father's parents this is generally oh. observed and this is oh. also mentioned in the vedic literature okay 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 so that is there but in general according to mahabharata this is this comes in many times actually so the kshatriya king is allowed to marry many wives if the wife is a kshatrani from the kshatriya background the son will be a kshatriya if the wife is from vaishya background the son will be vaishya even though father is kshatriya but the mother is vaishya okay. the son will be called as vaishya okay. like very soon we are going to hear about it in janmashtami ah right 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 ah uh, vasudev son vasudev yes. father was surasena Huh. and uh, nandamara's father was parjanya both parjanya yeah. and surasena were having same father but mothers hmm. are different so hmm. okay thank so you like that we should see so though the father is kshatriya but the mother is coming from the adharma lineage the son will be will be of adharma lineage he cannot be a kshatriya he, he, he might have the kshatriya chivalry but is mentality gone from adharma so in that way we should see hari krishna ha ah, yes mataji uh, prabhu ji uh, what is the difference between yamraj and mrutyu and whether they are related in any way no mrutyu is the mrutyu pas mrutyu is that mrutyu danda which is there in the hand of yamraj yamraj always has that uh, one uh, what we call this mrutyu pas okay so ah, here that rope, that rope yeah. personified form is mrutyu acha that mrutyu pashas personified form is mrutyu ah yes okay so although yamaraj is among the 12 mahajanas the hmm. pash he is carrying is uh, from the adharma lineage yeah see there the understanding is that mrutyu that mrutyu he is also one of the superhuman being only he will be the deity of adharma just like we have dharmaraj or yama dharmaraj the deity for dharma the deity for adharma is not mrutyu but adharma in that lineage that everyone is coming so if one takes to shell take the shelter of adharma eventually they will hand land in in the hands of mrutyu and mrutyu will take one to yama loka where one will go through elish pain Yeah, so that's how that that was presented in the four, fourth canon, eighth chapter. We saw this, these verses in one of the previous classes. Okay. Yeah. So okay. in that. Way. Yeah. So basically, the Murthy Pash is doing service in the hands of Yamaraj, which uh, takes, which gives the Murthy to anyone and everyone, and the personified form of that is Murthy Devata, and he is coming in the lineage of Adharma. So Adharma eventually leads to Murthy. murtyu leads to yatana deha that that basically takes one to hell and uh, gives hell is punishment so in, in that case little also, louder so that they will hear in case of devotees also when they leave their body mm. okay the murtyu pash has to come now because the soul has to come from the body out so, no yamadutas will not come to devotees that is a promise given by yamaraj in ajamil past time he says no don't go to devotees At least those who put the like those who chant Hari Nam even once they don't go to them. So how do they uh, get out the soul from the body? Like, no, they come out. Just as a normal course of karma, they'll come out and then they move on in the next species. Where are they supposed to go? So Prabhu ji, can we understand uh, it like this that uh, the personified mrityu uh, which we are talking about here is. uh is doing the service of being in the adharma lineage for carrying out the fu- function mm. whatever he is uh, seva he is given yes 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 okay okay thank you prabhu so ashtanga yogi is raised prana from muladha chakra to brahmandra piercing to brahmandra they will go away they they do by 
endeavor and for the sinful people they don't want to leave the body so yamaraja ramadutha come and forcefully they take out of the body here yogi wanted to go free by on his own and here karmi does not want to leave the body but in between devotees they are ready lord oh my dear lord if you want to take me the lord will take them out something like that you can say that process is still not very clear because i have heard that in, in known devotees or karmi people actually hmm. they are pulled by ah they are so because they don't want to leave the body yeah. that's why they are supposed to be pulled out and yogis want to leave the body they raise the prana and then give up the body and they go out and devotees they are ready they say that as long as you want me to be in the body i'll be whenever you want to take me i'll take i'll come a kalam pratikshan vimado vimasara narad muni past time so he is waiting for the right time to come so till then he was waiting so when the right time came the he attained spiritual body and mental body fell away so that is the in case of narad muni who is already liberated so no, he is a devotee yeah same thing can be applicable for a devotee in that way they leave the mental body they attain spiritual body and they go to spiritual world so in that way But what kind of devotee? Like we are talking purists. So yeah. we are not called devotees. Devotees, such as because we are still engaged in so many material things as such. We have so many duties to perform. So we okay. have desires while leaving the body. I'm, I mean, I'm not hoping for that, but there could be. We continue to practice this bhakti. Eventually, there will be spiritual progress. One day, one will become qualified to go back to Godhead. In that way. So today we'll continue with verse number forty. So this you have to be clear about the birth of birth and activities of Vena. Sa shara shenam udhyamya mrugayor vana gochara hanti asadur mrugandi nan Veno sau kiti araujana. After fixing his bow and arrow, the cruel boy used to go to the forest and unnecessarily kill innocent deer. And as soon as he came, all the people would cry. Here comes Kuruvena. Here comes Kuruvena. Yeah, this verse shows the cruelty of the Vena. Taking up his bow, Sharashanam Uddamya, and going to the fast forest, the evil hunter would kill the unfortunate deer. For no reason, he would kill the deers, having gone to the forest. The Shatriyas are allowed to go to forest and hunt. They can only hunt those animals which are increasing in population more and more. In order to maintain the ecology of the forest, they can do that. They can. They are not supposed to kill the animals indiscriminately. But Vena would kill all the innocent animals. And as he comes to the city, the people by looking at Vena, they would shout, "Here Vena comes! Here Vena comes!" The reason is that he, the people would think that. He had gone to forest. He killed innocent deer. Now he is coming to city to kill all of us. So flee away. Like that, people would hide from the vision of uh, Vena. So this is the mentality with which the Vena grew up, and he would always uh, trouble and torment innocent creatures. And uh, while he was playing with innocent boys, also. He would kill them for no reason. That is mentioned in the next verse. A kride kride to balan vayasyan tidar ati daruna prasaya nirankush nirang niranu krosha pasu maran amarayat. The boy was so cruel that while playing with young boys of his age. He would kill them very mercilessly, as if they were animals meant for slaughter. Yeah, even as a young boy, while playing with other boys, he would kill them for no reason, as if they are like dolls, play dolls. Are the animals meant for sacrifice? Pashu Maran. So this is the mentality with which he grew up. Kreda to a krede vayasair balan. So even while playing with other boys who are of equal age, his age, he would kill them for no reason, just for fun or something like that, just like killing the innocent animals.
तम विचक्षा कलम पुत्र शासनपा यदा नाशासी कल्प वृषम आसी Sudurmana. After seeing the cruel and merciless behavior of his son, Vena, King Anga punished him in different ways to reform him, but was unable to bring him to the path of gentleness. He thus became greatly aggrieved. So the King Anga tried to correct his son in many ways. You should not do like this. You should not do like this. Sometimes by uh, telling him what to do, what not to do. Sometimes by giving punishment, but still the son never listened to the father, and father became frustrated eventually. Then, praye na pyarchito devo ye praja grahame dina kadapatya brutam dukkam. The king thought to himself, persons who have no son are certainly fortunate. They must have worshipped the Lord in their previous lives so that they would not have to suffer the unbearable unhappiness caused by the bats. Yeah. Now, having tried different means to correct his son, when the king understood that, Now I cannot do anything with my son. I cannot correct him anymore. Then the king is thinking about it. Generally, the Lord must have been worshipped by persons who are without sons, since they do not have to suffer the intolerable grief caused by a bad son. So he is initially thinking that the Lord must have been worshipped by those people who do not have any sons. Or basically, you do not have any bad sons like Vena, because you are simply caught of grief. So they are quite happy, but I am not at all happy. So like that, he is expressing his uh, dissatisfaction unto the Supreme Lord. Praye na abhyarchito devo. They are almost to the extent that one need to worship the Supreme Lord. They are worshipped because they have not a son who is like this. So they don't have any trouble of having a son like this. So like that, he is uh, thinking now. This kind of verse is there in the Bhagavatam, mm. and we know Bhagavatam is like the absolute platform, not the true foundation. Yes. So this verse has to have a, some significance to what is spoken here. So you will understand after a couple of words later. Why he is saying what he is saying? It is not end. It just began. In couple of verses later, it comes. The Lord was worshipped by those with no sons, since they do not have to suffer the intolerable burden, completely manifested in the form of a bad son. Then the king further says, "Yata papi yasi kirti adar mascha mahandr nam yato yato virodh sarvesham." A sinful son causes a person's reputation to vanish. His religious activities at home cause division and quarrel among everyone, and this creates only endless anxiety. Yeah, because of a bad son, sinful reputation and great irreligion arises. For a householder, having a bad son, there are two things. Bad son will always do sinful activities. The family will be known as irreligious family. The reputation will come to the entire family. And also, even though the father might be doing something good, because son is doing something bad, it will be shared by the father also. The entire family becomes irreligious. So in that sense, from a bad son arises quarrel among everyone. He will not keep quiet. He keeps fighting with everyone, and everyone come home and shout at the parents. From a bad son arises endless anxiety. There is no end to the anxiety for the parents having such a bad son. 
all these are different problems by a batson the so, proper says in the purport that batson is like a blind eye dead eye so, there is no use of having a blind eye it is of no use instead to cause some mirror pain only so in that way kastam prajapadesham vai moha bandhanam atmana pandito bahu manyeta yadartha klesha dagraha who if he is considered an intelligent would desire such a worthless son such a son is nothing but a bond of illusion for the living entity and he makes one's home miserable hmm. what intelligent person would value ka pandita bahumanyeta which intelligent person will uh, value a son who is in name only a son who is of no use who is the cause of one's bondage and illusion and because of whom the house is full of suffering so what kind of intelligent person will consider such, such a son as a son and will experience happiness living in that home so like that the king is saying such a person is a son in name only actually being an ocean of suffering this the such kind of son will cause continuous suffering like a ocean which continuously gives wave wave after wave something like that the king decided that out of public shame he should leave the house full of material mental pain worshiping the lord day and night in an unknown place while taking only roots and fruits and in that way he would make the rest of his life worthwhile generally a king want to have a good son who will increase the reputation of the lineage who will take the responsibility of the citizens very nicely who will take care of the everyone in the kingdom nicely but if a son is like this how can he increase the reputation of the family instead he is spoiling the reputation of the family he is causing he is making the religious family into religious family and it will it is causing continuous suffering to the parents and eventually to the entire kingdom also so now the king decided that none of the intelligent person will consider this such kind of person as a son and continue to live in the home if such kind of person is a son it is better to leave home than stay with him and continue to suffer leave home go to forest live on roots and fruits and worship the supreme lord for the rest of life the king is thinking that because i have performed a sin as a result of that i got a, this such kind of a sinful son now let me go to forest and perform austerities so that i will purify myself he does not want to stay any more in the family and continue to stay in the midst of kingly opulences because there will be no happy Hare what is the use of having so many opulences but having a bad son so like that yes mataji hari krishna prabhu usually we say in a krish the king's duty is to protect the subjects now here the king ah. is planning to leave the subjects in care of his son who was ruthless was cruel so wasn't he going away from his prescribed duty of protecting the citizens no it's not like that now you see that it is a time for his retirement his son supposed to take care of the kingdom now he cannot make his son the next king at the same time he cannot continue further as a king even if he continue as a king he cannot rule he cannot rule peacefully every day his son is bringing a new new problem how can the king will continue to rule nobody could have like train somebody else to become the it is not uh, it is by guna and karma right so he could have trained somebody else to become the king who was uh, worthy of that the same instead of leaving it in the merciless hands of his sons the citizens guna and karma is not that easy we may say bhagavad gita and all guna hmm. and karma is there but generally the rulership will go in uh, discipline in uh, family succession only it won't okay. happen just like that Okay. There is a story where the king gives. Bharat Maharaj only. Bharat Maharaj only. Uh, he, when he had nine sons who are not of good quality, he throws all the nine sons into the forest, and then he will adopt to Bharat Bharat Vaja, and he makes Bharat Vaja the next king. That is there, but Bharat Maharaj is not under pressure. So determined. And here he is. We may think that he could have trained somebody else like that, but he he might not have seen anybody who is worthwhile. 
He is already frustrated so much. He does not want to do anything more. Of course, as you said, it is his responsibility to take care of the citizens. But he thought that he knew already. The Brahmanas told that you made a sin in the previous life. That's why you did not have a son. So then he understood that I am already a sinful person. I got a sinful son. Let me purify myself. Janma sartha kore karo parapakar. So first he wanted to purify himself. Then he gave it to destiny, to the will of the Lord. Whatever Lord wants, that will, he will take care. So he thought that I am not in control. Lord is in control. Let him take. Let he take care of it. So he decided to go to forest. Thank you, Prabhu. Question: But the the queen is not considered at all. I mean, where is she then? She is there. She, what she can she do? Her husband to forest and. And no, no, no. We'll wait, wait. We'll see in the next verses. How is she would go? She's already from other lineage. So, so she she will have happy. natural affinity towards son. Yeah, she will be happy. No, only in the father. So then, in the next couple of verses, very interesting thing is mentioned. So here it says that. Sadapatyam varam manye, sadapatyaj, shucham padat. निर्विद्येत ग्रहान मर्त्यो यत्क्लेशा निवहा ग्रहान Then the king thought a bad son is better than good son because a good son creates an attachment for home whereas a bad son does not. A bad son creates a hellish home from which an intelligent man naturally becomes very easily detached. Yeah. Previously he was saying that I think those parents who do not have son they prayed the Lord sufficiently. But now she is seeing the positive side. He said that, I consider a bad son better than a good son. Because, having a good, by having a good son, the house becomes a source of happiness. But having a bad son, the house becomes source of suffering. Then, the person can become detached, disinterested in the house very easily. If the children is very nice, children are very nice. So the father becomes naturally inclined to the children and he wants to stay for the for long and long, more and more in the family only. So he becomes attached to the family. But if the son is like this, very bad, the entire family life itself is full of suffering. Every day new, new suffering is coming. The father will never become attached to the family life. He becomes immediately detached like that. So that, that that's what he's is actually evaluating. Previously said that uh, those who do not have son, they worship Lord sufficiently. Now he says that those who have bad son, it is actually Lord's mercy that they can become detached from the family very easily. So like that is seen. He understood that this son would be a cause of developing a taste of taste for renunciation. The Lord being merciful wanting to bring me close to his lotus feet. Though I am blind with material enjoyment, has given me this son. So, because he only performed Ignya to please Lord Vishnu, then only the Ignya Purusha came with a part, uh, part of sweet rice, then the son was born. Then he's telling that, Lord only gave this son. So, Lord has, must have had some plan. So, he, I was so much attached to family life, he wanted to give me detachment, so he gave me this son. So, like that he's seeing, uh, Lord's mercy in this particular action. The same thing, if you remember, third canto, first chapter, when the Duryodhana criticized Vidura, saying that you are the son of a kept mistress, Dasi Putra, then Vidura thought that Lord's hand, Lord's Mahamaya is acting on Duryodhana, Yogamaya is acting on me, so it is the right time for me to get away from the kingly the responsibilities, the minister responsibilities. So he left his job and went to forest. Taking that as a good opportunity. Here, same way here, King Anga also taking this as a good opportunity, he will go to the forest. It is not that he is irresponsible, he tried his level best. So now it is out of his control, out of his capacity. So he cannot do anything. So he left. So he left. So this verse we hear many times, Prabhupada quotes in the Bhagavatam. Esya manugraha nami 
हरिषे तदन शन तथो धन तजस्त स्वजना दुख दुख If I, the well, Lord says that if I personally favor someone, I gradually deprive him of his wealth. Then the relatives and friends of such a poverty-stricken man abandon him. In this way, he suffers one distress after another and eventually comes to me. For some special devotees, Lord will perform like this. This is where exactly this verse is placed. Okay, this is uh, Sri Mat Bhagavatam 10:88. वैकुंठ Oh, that is another. That is also there in that same chapter. That is another past time. So, with this understanding, the king leaves home and goes to the forest. Evam sanirvin namana andru pogruhan nisita vutta yama hoda yoda yat alabda nidro anuplakshito nubir hitva gato ve na suvam prasuttam. thinking like that king anga could not sleep at night he became completely indifferent to household life once therefore in the dead of night he got up from bed and left vena's mother that is his wife who was sleeping deeply he gave up all attraction for his greatly opulent kingdom and unseen by anyone he very silently gave up his home and opulences and proceeded towards the forest Mm. Here the interesting happens in the night, in the middle of the night, twelve midnight, filled with disgust, nirvinna mana, filled with complete frustration and disgust, the sleepless king, alab the nidro on rupa for many 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 years, many many decades we can say since the time the child was born, he was not having proper sleep only. That king, in the middle middle of the night, got up from his bed. Unseen by others, and giving up his sleeping wife, Kitwa Prasuttam Vena Suvam, his wife was in deep sleep. So your question is answered here now. He is not even getting sleep from many years, many decades, but his wife was sleeping nicely. So he got up, and then left the house full of great wealth. Even though the palace is full, filled with lot of opulences, but he is not really interested in any of the palaces, palace opulences. He simply dedicate, decided that let me go to forest and uh, live life in a simple austere way, eating only fruits and roots, because I am I have a sin performed in the previous life. Let me atone for my sin, something like that. Let me purify myself of that sinful activities. So he went to the forest with that thought. He did not want to inform his wife also. Silently, he got up, he changed his clothes, and went to the forest. Mahodayat grahat means from the house manifesting great wealth. Vena Suva means the mother of Vena, known as Sunita. When she was deeply sleeping, he changed his clothes and left from the palace without informing or uh, in without being noticed by anyone. Because somebody sees him, they will call him back. So he does not want to come back home, home again. So that that kind of detachment appeared in the heart of King Anga. <laughs> so next morning, when the queen got up, she could not find the king. She searched all over the palace and she informed the ministers and uh, soldiers, etc. Vigna yani rvidya gatam patim praja puro hitatma puro hitam matya. When it was understood that the king had indifferently left home, all the citizens, priests, ministers, friends, and people in general were greatly aggrieved. 
they began to search for him all over the world, just as a less experienced mystic researches out the super soul within himself. Mm. Early in the morning, when the wife informed that king is not seen in the palace in the inner, inner chambers, then everyone came to know who all. When the citizens, the priests, the friends, and ministers understood that the king had left in disgust, in great grief, they searched the entire kingdom for the king. Just as inexperienced yogis search for the hidden Paramatma. Paramatma is situated in the core of the heart only, but the yogis search for him here, there, here, there, here, the mind is wanting here and there. So like that, all the citizens, the priests, the brahmana, the friends and ministers, everyone was searching for the king all over the kingdom. But the interesting thing is that the example of the yogi searching for the hidden Paramatma indicates that on that day, the king remained secretly somewhere in his own city. I was just going to ask, why this analogy? It doesn't make any sense. Because immediately that day, he did not leave the kingdom, the capital city. He stayed in the capital city. King knew. He's a wonderful king. He knew that the they will search all over. So he allowed them to go everywhere and search. When they do not find anywhere, then they come come back to the city and he will go to the forest. Then again, they will not come to the forest because they have already searched in the forest. So they are sure that, okay, so something like that. So he acted intelligently. Basically, he was so determined that he does not want to come back. So it's like that. Alakshayanta padavim prajapate atodhyama prat Tupa Srishate Purim Rishin Sameta Nabivanda Shasvaro Shasravo Navedayan Paurava Birth to Viplavam When the citizens could not find any trace of the king after searching for him everywhere, they were very disappointed and they returned to the city where all the great sages of the country assembled because of the king's absence. With tears in their eyes, the citizens offered respectful obeisances and informed the sages in full details that they were unable to find the king anywhere. Oh, Vidura, not finding the path of the king in which direction the king went to the forest, unable to find out that. All the people who went to search for the king, they all went to the city in great disappointment. And with tears in their eyes, greeting the assembled sages, they inform the sages of the disappearance of the king. All the great sages who assembled in the palace, in the Sabha, all the soldiers who went to search for the king, they came back and they informed all the great sages, the great brahmanas that, my dear brahmanas, we could not find the king, the whereabouts of the king, where he has gone, we don't know. Whether he is alive or not also, we don't know. So, in that way, they informed. So this is how King Ganga leaves the kingdom and goes to the forest. So kindly note one thing here, I mentioned in the previously also, we will discuss about that in the, at the end of the last chapter also, one more the, the reason, uh, one important thing is there, which is the connection between first canto and fourth canto. In the book, Bhagavatam and Sikhar journey, I have mentioned that um, every pastime in the fourth canto and fifth canto will indicate one obstacle that will come in the life of a sadhaka. So the obstacle which is indicated through this chapter is association with the improper companion. Somehow or other, what was the reason, we don't know. But King Anga married Sunita, who is the daughter of Murtyu coming in the lineage of Adharma. So as a result of that, he had a cruel son like Vena. So this is one point we can see how Improper association will take us into a troublesome lifestyle. So association should be proper. So in the case of king, the queen is the association. In the case of devotees, our association with other devotees, that we should be careful about that. And the second thing, a nice comparison between King Anga and Dhrashtra. King Anga had a cruel son. Dhrashtra also had a nasty son. Here Anga never supported King Vena. Okay, Vena. Instead, he was trying to correct him and punish him. Dhrashtra sometimes tried to correct 
Duryodhana. But many times he sided Duryodhana. If Dhritarashtra also followed in the footsteps of Anga, one day he would have also become enough detached. He would have left to home and then gone to forest and perfect his life. But he did not do that. Till the last moment, till the last point of uh, Kurukshetra battle, he was always hopeful that his son will give him happiness like that. He was finding happiness in his son. Though his son was nasty, in fact, knowing he is nasty, he always looked after his son only for the for his own pleasure. So this is the distinction between these two people. So Vidura is hearing these pastimes from Maitreya. Now he is hearing about Anga, who, having tried different means of correcting his nasty son, when he failed, he left home and went to forest to perfect his life. Later on, we see there is another king, Prachina Barhi. He was also attached to kingly opulences. In order to increase the prosperity, he was performing one after the other so many uh, Vedic uh, rituals, so many agnyas. He was so much attached to those, those Karpakanda rituals. Then Nardamuni came and forcefully preached to him. So what are you doing this? Unnecessarily killing animals for no reason. Your kingdom is already enough prosperous. Why you want to increase the prosperity more and more? There is no use of performing all these agnyas for no reason. Stop it. Then uh, what should I do? Go to forest and take to renunciation and perform bhakti. He said, no, no, how can I go? My sons are gone to Gurukul. They are studying. They are performing austerities. When they come back, when they get married, when they become kings, then I can go to the forest. Then Nardamuni strongly speaks a, another allegorical story, saying that what, what are you speaking? No one knows when the death will come. Take to it immediately. You have already um, um, meddled with your life. So take to it immediately. So forget about the kingdom. The king, your son will come and they will be king. No problem. Kingdom will be taken care. You take care of yourself first. Then Prachinna Barhi, giving the responsibility of taking care of the kingdom to the ministers, he goes to the forest to practice bhakti. Full fledged bhakti. Chetas also go to. They went to they went to forest for the uh, brahmacharis. Brahmacharis. Gurukul. Gurukul and then Parfanta Pasya, Shadi and Parfanta Pasya. But he is going as a Vanaprasa. So before they could return. So after hearing these two stories, Nardamuni did not, con uh, Vidura did not continue to stay for a long time with Maitreya. He asked so many questions. But before hearing answer to all his questions, Vidura told, My dear Maitreya Rishi, thank you very much for whatever you have told. Now I have to go back and I have important duty to perform. Yes. He is also attached to kingly offenses like uh, Prachna Bari. Just like Nardamani spoke very strongly, I also need to speak to him very strongly. So like that, Narad Vidura stopped the conversation there itself and comes to Astinapur. Then he speaks very harshly to Dhritarashtra and makes him realize what he's supposed to do. Then Dhritarashtra quits home and goes to Himalayas and performs some Ashtanga Yoga and then gives up his body. So this is the connection between first canto, that chapter and this fourth canto these chapters. So like that. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Ah, yes, much. Prabhuji, uh, Dhridrashtra had Mahajans and the Supreme Lord advising him still, mm. still he did not reform. Okay, they were great devotees and Krishna, Supreme Lord himself was there. And in case of Prachina Barishi, Naratmuni, great devotee was there. But in case of Anga, who was the devotee who inspired him to do this? Take up to devotional service and quit the kingdom. No, he himself is coming in the line of Dhruva Maharaj. No? He is not very far. In the line of Dhruva Maharaj only is maybe four or five generations later. He is by birth is yeah, a great but devotee. I mean, when Dhridrasha had personal association with all these great people, he did not take up. And Prachina Barishi uh. had to be convinced by Narad Bani for so many times before he took up to devotional service. So Anga in that case, he has uh, renounced. No, very Anga is by birth a devotee. He, he, is, okay. he simply is born in the devotee family means he is a devotee. Okay. And he also had the association of all the Brahmanas. If you remember in the previous chapter, they told. So, my dear king, in this life, you are a very righteous person. You have not done any mistake, any sin. But in your previous life, you have done a small mistake okay. because of which you did not have a son. Because of which the, Brah the Devatas are not accepting. But now let us worship Lord Vishnu. He did not go here and there to get a son. He directly went to Lord Vishnu only to get a son. And see his wonderful devotional qualities. His grandson is Vishnu himself. King Prutu, 
he is another than vishnu himself na he appeared as a grandson la king prutu the lord vishnu appearing as king prutu is the greatness of king anga that's how we should see no but because prutu anga is not so, bhakti is so great given, he is an avesh avatar only na prutu is because he has been in, invested with the potency of the lord he is not exact he is a jeeva only invested with the potency of the lord is in prutu maharaj hell having avesh avatar also not ordinary uh you you think that it is very easy or what no i'm not saying it's easy but i'm just saying ki uh, no it's okay prabhu <laughs> okay so, see even though he is avesh avatar for the time of time being you accept him as lord vishnu only what is the problem the lord vishnu was so pleased and he appeared as uh, in his expansion in his manifest uh, avesh avatar you can say like that no issue he may not be full vishnu tatva like krishna rama vamana but he is also like like supreme lord so that 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 shows the devotional attitude of uh, anga maharaj so in that hare any other devotees have any questions yeah yeah prabhu ji in the bhagavatam sometimes we see that one person is glorified for particular quality at the same time uh, in another um, context maybe that same quality is seen as a negative like here uh, how we see that king anga went to the forest so his renunciation is glorified due to the whatever the cause was his son but mm. at the same time uh, we see that uh, as if in case of kingly duties from that point of view if we try to view the situation then he has neglected his duty or maybe it it was a, i see it as a means with my little intelligence i see it as a emotional response more than the intellectual response to the situation so uh, no no it is not it is not emotional response it is not intellectual response it is a response out of complete surrender and it is a response out of complete knowledge these great devotees in spite of being responsible to the kingly duties ultimately they know nothing is in our hands everything is in the hands of the supreme lord nothing can go against the will of the supreme lord even though they may be putting all their efforts but they know that everything is happening by the supreme lord only not by them okay so they have that confidence that even if i live at this point ultimately when i was there also the kingdom was taken care by the lord's mercy and if i am yes, not there yes, so yes, it will be yes 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 otherwise why would nardamuni would tell prachina bari to leave immediately leaving behind his kingly responsibilities they know you don't worry about the kingdom kingdom will be taken care very nicely you do need to do the needful okay okay so whatever the general understanding is at one point one has to go beyond that and see everything as a mercy of lord and then act at that platform that's what that is yes 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 one should be so duties are there duties if not you somebody else will take care but the most important duty for oneself going back to god that no one can do one one should work upon it yeah and in that sense like if we see in this his situation um, whatever his bad son was there there were no signs of uh, any you know that one day he will become a better son or a good son so then yes, there yes. was no point when he will go uh, when he will retire from this kingly duties and go So it is better yes. at some point. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Thank you. So now, uh, because there is no king, the sages will make Vena the king, and eventually so many things happen. That is mentioned in the next chapter. No, but he will go back, come back to guard it eventually. That's how we don't know, but that is how he has already made his mind. I will go and worship. the lord lord vishnu for the rest of my life he is determined he is already a devotee he will continue his bhakti and he will go back to godhead so no need to worry about him in the 14th chapter after being installed as a king by the sages the irreligious vena is given instructions killed and then has his leg churned by the sages so this is the topic of the 14th chapter so in the previous chapter it was all about king anga and this chapter is all about king vena in one sense what vena will do at the king etc maitreya uvacha bruguadayaste munayo lokanam kshema darshina gopat goptari asati vaindranam 
पश्यता पशु साम्यता The great sage, the great Maitreya, sage Maitreya, Maitreya continued. O oh, great hero Vidura, the great sages headed by Bhrugu were always thinking of the welfare of the people in general. When they saw that in the absence of King Anga, there was no one to protect the interests of the people, they understood that without a ruler, the people would become independent and non-regulated. So here Maitreya is saying that. Bhrugu and other great sages, who are the seers of the people's welfare, Loka Nam Shema Darshana, saw that in the absence of a king, men would become like animals. If there is no king who will regulate what rules and regulations of the entire kingdom, the people become like criminals, like they live like animals. So king should be there for a kingdom to go on nicely. So that's what the sages were thinking about it. The sages saw that the people were similar to animals. Samyatam or samadam means being equal to. As wolves or jackals kill sheep, so criminals would kill the citizens without a king. In the country, everywhere there are always some innocent people, some criminal-minded people. If there is no king, the criminal-minded people will destroy the innocent people and loot them and rob them and then plunder them. So, in order to protect the innocent people, the king should be there. There should be some rules and regulations governing. So here the sages are worried about the innocent populace of the kingdom. So who will be exploited by the criminal minded people? This yuga which we are talking about is Sakti Yuga only, like right? yet. Sakti Yuga? Is it not? Not necessarily. No. It's Swayambhu Manantra. Yugas will be changing only. This is uh, not necessarily Sakti Yuga. Satya Yuga, this kind of things may not happen. Yeah, I was just wondering that. It could be either Dwapara Yuga or maybe Fag end of Treta Yuga. Yeah, because we are comparing Vena with Duryodhana, who is the person of Dwapara Yuga. So this could have been a past time of Dwapara Yuga, one of the Dwapara Yuga. Veera Matara Mahuya Sunitam Brahma Vadina Prakriti Asamata Asamatam Venam the great sages then called for the queen mother Sunita and with her permission they installed Vena on the throne as a master of the world. All the ministers however disagreed with this. Yeah. Then seeing the need of the king because otherwise the populace will be troubled by the, the criminals. So the sages called Sunita and told uh, Sunita and as well as the minister, they said that we want to make Vena the next king. So, but uh, the, the ministers and mother Sunita did not approve it. No, how can you do this? Unable to maintain this son, only the father left to the forest. And how if he become the king, he will destroy the people left, right. He already killing the innocent children and innocent animals for no reason. If he himself become the king, he will destroy. It. The sages said that if he does not become the king, the criminals will destroy the people. So in order to punish the criminals and keep them under control, someone should be there on the throne. So right now we only have this person who can become the king. So let us make him as the king. Like that the sages said. So even though the minister, citizens and his mother are not approved that he cannot become the king, even his own personality does not qualify him to be the king. In spite of that, Seeing the need of the hour, the sages headed by Brugu made him the king. Hoping that he will listen to us. The Brahmana thought that we are making him king. Out of gratitude, he will listen to us. Thinking like that, they made him king. Yeah, emergency situation. But something else happened there. Shrutva Andrupasa Nagatam Venam Atyugra Shasanam Niliyur Dasyava Sadhya Sarpatrasta Ivakava. It was already known that Vena was very severe and cruel. Therefore, as soon as all the thieves and rugs in the state heard of his ascendance to the royal, royal throne, they became very much afraid of him. 
Indeed, they hid themselves here and there as rats hide themselves from snakes. Even the same, this chapter all talks about so many thieves, thieves coming and robbing the people in general. That also indicates that this past time might have been in Dwapar Yuga, not necessarily be in Satya Yuga or Teta Yuga, where we couldn't expect that kind of theory and all so much. Also, as you mentioned, that Vidura went back in between no. to carrying the thrust, or that means this is offering. No, this past time happened long back, Sarmo Manantara. Vidura is happening around now. Achha, so it's it's not that very. It's close. not currently happening. This is a story being told by Maitreya to Vidura. Yeah. It's a old story. Like we discussed Ramayana Mahabharata now. Ramayana Mahabharata took right. place long back. Something like that. So hearing that Vena, a terrible punisher, has assumed the throne, sinful men hid themselves immediately like rats which are afraid of snakes. All the plunderers, criminals, they understood that Vena has become king. If we come in his, if we are caught and to, taken to him, he will be merciless. He will kill us left and right and center immediately. So they are afraid of King Vena and they hid themselves like the rats out of the fear of snakes. So this is one good thing happened, but the problem is now. Sa aruda drupastana unna dosta vibhuti bhi. Avamene Mahabhagan Ashtabha Sambhavita Swata. When the king ascended to the throne, he became all powerful with eight kinds of opulences. Consequently, he became too proud. By virtue of his false prestige, he considered himself to be greater than anyone. Thus, he began to insult great personalities. Vena. Mm. On ascending the throne, Aruda and Rupasthana became very much proud because of the eight powers, Ashta Vibhuti Bhim. Eight powers means powers coming from all the eight directions. Matlab, everyone is surrendering unto him. No king dare to fight with him. And then everyone is paying a lot of taxes, he's getting a lot of wealth, so in that way. And proudly considered himself worthy of worship. Stabda Stambhavita Swata. He considered himself, I am supposed to be worshipped because everyone is worshipping him in one sense. Every other small marking coming and going down in front of his feet, then they are paying a lot of taxes, they are giving a lot of money. He thought that I am the greatest, I am the most powerful, I am the most worthy of worship. So, like that, he thought. Thus, he disrespected the exalted people. He never cared to worship the Brahmanas. He thought he himself is the supreme of everything. So, in that way. He became proud because of the eight powers means he became proud because of possessing wealth from the eight directions. Because he is the ruler of the entire Bhumandala. He is the lord of the entire Bhuloka. So he felt he is the most powerful, most wealthy and most influential or something like that. Mentioned that these eight times performances are actually the mystic siddhis only. Which Raja she used to have by themselves by yogic practice. However, Vena wasn't so good, so he didn't have those. But he didn't have those eight mistakes with this. Yeah. But he had all other opulences a person aspires to have wealth, name, fame, power, prestige, fear. Everyone is fearful of him. These are all powers he has. And entire world, I mean, entire world, the entire Buloka Bumandal is under his subjugation. He is the ruler of the entire Bumandala, not one small country, Mumbai or Maharashtra. Entire Bumandala, consisting of seven islands. So, in that way. Tabda means proud. He boasted that he himself was the warrior and scholar. He was boasting that I am the king. I am the most intelligent and knowledgeable person. There is no one more physically powerful than me and intellectually more intelligent than me. So like that he is boasting always. Evam madanda utshipta nirankusha ivadvipa pariyatan ratamastaya kampayan ivarodasi When he became overly blind due to his opulences, 
King Vena mounted a chariot and, like an uncontrolled elephant, began to travel through the kingdom, causing the sky and earth to tremble wherever he went. Yeah. He did not stay at one place. He keep on traveling here and there because a person having uh, come to this place, he wanted to see everyone being surrounded unto him. So when people surrounded unto him, he would experience joy and happiness. That with, with that intention, he was traveling all over. Blind, intoxicated, proud, and uncontrollable, like a mad elephant, he traveled on his chariot around the earth. Entire Bhumandala, causing the earth and sky to tremble. Because when he is traveling, he cannot go alone. Because he is the monarch, entire army will follow. Because the entire army is following, the earth seems to be trembling. And not only the army, the musical instrument, all these things will follow. When they are playing, the entire ether is trembling. So, like that, the entire earth and the ether all are trembling as he was traveling from place to place. It is like the victory march is going on. So while going on, he is propagating his philosophy. He has his own philosophy because we already saw that in the previous verse. He is telling that he is the most powerful warrior. He is the most knowledgeable person. And with that, he is propagating his philosophy. What is his philosophy? Na estavyam na datavyam. All the twice born Brahmanas were forbidden henceforward to perform any sacrifice, and they were also forbidden to give charity or offer clarified butter. Thus, King Vena sounded kettle drums throughout the countryside. In other words, he stopped all kinds of religious rituals. So his philosophy is this. Wherever he traveled, he was telling to all the Brahmanas, Oh Brahmanas, no more performance of sacrifices. Na kvachit estvayam, estavyam. No performance of sacrifices. No more giving charities. And no more offering of oblations into the fire. He stopped performance of dharma or varnashrama duties with the sound of drums everywhere. Bheri Goshena Sarvasha. He is traveling everywhere and he is telling that do not perform sacrifice, do not offer oblations into the fire, do not give charities. This is his philosophy. The reason later on he will say that because in the performance of Vijna, there is the worship of Devatas and Lord. He said that no such kind of worship. If at all you want to perform Vijna and worship, perform on my name. Not in the name of Vishnu, not in the name of Indra, Chandra, Varuna, Vayu, other Devatas. But if you want to do something on my name, otherwise don't do anything. Isn't it much like Hiranya Kashyapuna Prabhuji? Yeah, so same. We see in the Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, when they became the rulers, they go everywhere and they say that no Ignya, no call protection, no Brahmanas, no Vedic study. They destroy all those things. Same thing, we are also doing the same thing here. They have physical power also. This fellow does not have anything. No, no, he has physical power. He is a son of a king. He cannot be, uh, what you can say, uh, ordinary. He is the most powerful person. Okay. They performed austerities, they got power, yeah. that is okay, but he, by birth he has got power. No one could stand in front of him, that means see. That was the position he had, because of that no one could, right? Not only position, what to speak of position? Anyway, he has to fight in the battle, na? Whether you have position or no position, bat fight means battle. Battle means that you don't become victorious, you cannot promote your uh, strength. So no one could stand in front of him, means everyone knew that he is so powerful. Ah, physically so powerful. Killing people for no reason. Ah, Bachpan say he is like that. We can say he is like uh, Kumbhakarna, the most powerful person. Or Iranaksha. Where Iranaksha would go on, the Devata just by looking at him, they flee away from that place. No one would stand in front of him, no one would dare to fight with him. 
Because the appearance is so gigantic. No one can dare to fight with him. Hiran Naksha or Kumbhakarna, they are like huge personalities. So who can dare to fight with them? Same way here, Vena also something like that. So here, kindly see this. These words have come in Bhagavad Gita also. In the 17th chapter, there is a discussion about Ignya. Ignya dana tapat. Three things are there, na? Pavanani Manishna. These three things will purify anyone. One should never give up these three things. And here, Vena is telling, don't do them only. No Ignya, no dana, no tapasya. So that is mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita. Afala kaamshi piriya gnyo vidi dhishto ya ijjate eshtvayam e veti mana samadaya sasatvika. This talks about the sacrifice, ignya in the mode of goodness. The ignya which is performed according to scriptures. Without desire for material results. According to scripture means eshtvayam e veti. Since it is mentioned in the scriptures that king is supposed to perform ignya. One is supposed to perform some ignya. King or Brahmana, they are supposed to perform ignya. They, they will perform ignya. And Afala Kangshibir, without desire for the material results. The kings would perform ignya not for their own material prosperity, for the well being of the entire kingdom. They would perform ignya. So, like that. And with the mentality that it should be done, it should be performed because of the scriptural injunction. Vidhi Dishtoya Ijate, because it is Vidhi. It is the injunction of the Vedic literature. It should be done. It is the responsibility. They would never ever stay away from their responsibilities. So this is how a person in the mode of goodness thinks. And a person in the mode of ignorance thinks exactly opposite. Vidihi nam asrishtanam mantrahi nam madakshinam shraddha virahitam yagnam tamasam parichakshate. They say that the sacrifice which is contrary to scriptures, vidihi nam. They don't follow the rules and traditions of the literature. With no food given in charity, asrishtanam, no one is fed food. And mantrahinam adakshinam, without proper chanting of the mantras, and where their priests are not paid properly, adakshinam, their charities are not given. And shraddha virahitam, without faith. Such kind of ignya is tamasic ignya. So either King Vena is promoting the Tamasic Ignya, not promoting Satsuki. He is telling no Satsuki Ignyas, but perform Tamasic Ignya. So like that. Yeah, 1711 and 13. So then, things will further continue. Venasya Veksha Munayo Vimrusha loka vyasanam krupa yo chusma satrina. Therefore, all the great sages assembled together and after observing Kurubena's atrocities, concluded that a great danger and catastrophe was approaching the people of the world. Thus, out of compassion, they began to talk amongst themselves. For they themselves for the performance of the Yeah, because he is traveling everywhere and telling all the Brahmanas that no Yashvayam, no Ignya, no Dhanam, no Charities, no Hudam, no offering of oblations into the fire. Then what the Brahmanas will do? Brahmanas mean their life is all about Ejan Yachan Patan Patan Dana Parigraha. Dhan Nai Leneka, Dhan Nai Deneka, Ignya Nai Karneka, Ignya Nai Karvaneka. Or Shastra Binai Panneka, Shastra Binai Sikana to Kakarin Yonko, which can never say. So then all the Brahmanas, the leader along with the leaders, they wanted to give good sense of knowledge to the king. They all come to the king. Seeing the activities of the sinful Vena and considering the danger to the people, the sages with compassion spoke among themselves. Initially, they thought, they thought for themselves what to do, how to correct this current situation. Then they come to the king. They will speak to the king. What king is doing not correct, what he is supposed to do. Those things they will tell. So now the kings are, the sages are considering among them, they, they are talking among themselves. Aho bayata praptam lokasya vyasanam mahat dharuni ubayato dipe iva taskara palayo.
when the grace was started one another, they saw that the people were in a dangerous position from both directions. When a fire blazes on both ends of a dog, the ants in the middle air, middle are in a very dangerous situation. Similarly, at that time, the people in general were in dangerous position due to an irresponsible king on one side and thieves and dogs on the other. So the citizens are thinking that because there was no king, the thieves are robbing the citizens. So we made Vena the king. Now thieves are not robbing, but Vena himself is robbing. He is not stopping there. He is robbing all the citizens. He is not allowing the Brahmanas to perform their duties. He is not allowing anyone else to perform their respective duties. So the, now the situation is like a log is burning from the both the sides. So nice analogy is given. When a log burns from the root and from the tip, the ants in the middle have danger from both the sides. The people and the brahmanas living in the kingdom are like the ants, which are there in the middle of the tree. So from the top, there is fire. That is like the thieves who are coming and plundering them and destroying them. From the bottom, there is another fire, that is the king who is not allowing them to perform their duties and who is leaving very heavy taxes from them. So very soon, both the side fire is coming. Very soon the people are going to be burnt to ashes. That is the situation of the people and Brahmanas there. The citizens must flee to a fort. When the thieves are after the people, they should run to the palace, the fort. If they go to the fort, the king will load them. And in the state, they must fear their protector, the king. So where they will go? They can neither enter the fort, they, can, they cannot stay outside also. So they are in a great danger. So for their benefit, the brahmanas are thinking about what to do and all. Arajaka bayat esha kruto raja tadarhana tatopi asid bayam tu bayam tvadya katam syat Swasti Dehinam. Thinking to save the state from irregularity, the sages began to consider that it was due to a political crisis that they made King Avenak the king, although he was not qualified. But alas, now the people were being disturbed by the king himself. Under such circumstances, how could the people be happy? Yeah, here the sages are saying that fearing a state without a king, they made, they had made Vena the king, though he was not qualified. Therefore, previously they thought that by making him king, he will be grateful to us and he will take our guidance time to time. But instead, he is telling them to stop performing India only. Therefore, there was now fear of him. How will the people be happy? The Brahmanas themselves are in predicament. They are not allowed to perform Ajna. Then what to speak of the common people? It is like a great danger. Now the sages are thinking that because we have made him the king, we are responsible for the current situation. So it is our responsibility to correct the matter. Like that the Brahmanas are thinking. Aheriva payo posha, bokshakasyapi anartha brut, vena prakritya ivakala, sunita garba sambhava. The sages begin to think within themselves. Because he was born from the home of Sunita, in Vena is by nature very mysterious. Supporting this mischievous king is exactly like maintaining a snake with milk. Now he has become a source of all evils. Yeah. By nature, Vena is wicked. Being born from the womb of Sunita. Because Sunita comes from the other lineage, by nature it will be wicked. It is expected also. He is like a snake nourished by milk. A wicked person not supposed to be given the position. But he was given the position of the king. He is already wicked. Now he has the position. So he can't, he can't be controlled. This is what Vidura tells to Dhritarashtra. You abandon Duryodhana. Because Duryodhana as a normal citizen cannot do much harm. 
but if he is on the position of the king he will create greater harm to the entire kingdom abandon him even at the time of the birth of duryodhan also brahmana told him that this person will be going to the cause of the entire destruction of the entire dynasty please either kill him or discard him so that he will not be bo- he will not continue to grow in the royal order so if he is growing as a normal citizen the problem will be limited only but dhritarashtra did not he did not take any corrective measures against duryodhana throughout his life so it's like hari krishna uh, yes, yes. Given, in comparison to avena and duryodhana if we see that it is said now that duryodhana his political duties or whatever he was supposed to do uh, as a king he was doing it well that is why even in kurukshetra battle arjuna told uh, arjuna was talking to krishna that why should i do uh, he is taking care of the kingdom properly so just because i, I have we have to become king why should we fight with them that was no 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 arjuna never said that he is taking care of the kingdom properly how can you expect from duryodhana proper what is the purpose of a person becoming king to rule properly no i didn't get your question what is the purpose of a person becoming king to give um, good question um, that you have asked right now mm. give comfortable situation to all cit- uh, citizens so that they can uh, progress in their spiritual life and attain the goal of human life to facilitate okay. who, who can process. provide favorable circumstances for practicing bhakti what kind of a king can provide favorable circumstances for practicing bhakti who himself is a devotee and who uh, is a worshipper of the supreme lord ah then who, who is duryodhana okay he rejected the krishna's uh, supremacy altogether like krishna's godhood only he, he rejected krishna supremacy and he does not tolerate he is not tolerant of devotee other devotees pandavas so what kind of governance duryodhana would provide atheist government okay yeah understood because somewhere i had heard or read that you know uh, whatever his kingly duties he was t- doing it properly yeah see you what not only you i also heard these things from the childhood everyone speaks like that because that is the way the atheistic philosophy propagates since childhood i always heard Kar- karma being the perfect gentleman duryodhana being the perfect politician we we here because that is what it is atheism is everywhere all over india the atheistic people will like atheistic uh, principles they promote atheistic uh, philosophies only and they glorify people like duryodhana and karna and ravana so don't worry we get to hear more and more in the future also yeah See, atheist, atheistic philosophy and also all inclusive philosophy both are in, uh, in one sense dangerous not just like if you see currently also who serve rules they are not devotee devotees no they are and you know the same the government they are all matlab sab bhagwan ka unko hai so it is actually misguiding in one sense something is better than nothing yeah so yeah they are in very good position in this who yeah. right now that's definitely i i don't disagree with that it's better that they are at least they are uh, they are they are allowing some worship yes. they are not outrightly atheistic mm-hmm. they are not saying no worship like yes. vena is like outrightly saying no yagna no worship of vishnu no no performance of varnashram duties then is outright atheism so in that way at least this is my understanding mataji you can check with other senior devotees so my understanding is that here vena he by birth is very nasty but when he is given power obviously a nasty person given power means he will exploit the power left and right anything that's what is happening now what to speak of being a danger to citizens we have made him the king but he now punishes us by announcing that we cannot perform sacrifice humne unko raja banaya abhi wo raja ban kar aake humko bol raha hai yagna mat karo karna hai to mera naam pe karo abhi dekho जल्दी नहीं होता
transform. Difficult, very difficult. Unless until they are determined to change. That, that mentality will not go away just like that. That's why we always hear that Bhakti Sukriti plays an important role. Somehow or other, either we have performed Sukriti or we have already practiced Bhakti, some Bhakti in previous lives. That's why this, this life at the right time, some devotee came in our life and our that devotional uh, favoritism, which was hidden in the heart, kind of ignited and we started accepting devotional activities. There are many people outside whom we might give Bhagavad Gita, whom we might give bead back, whom we might invite them for many times prasadam, but still they don't start bhakti. Why? Unka life ne sukruti jama nahi hua bitak. Or in their previous life they are not, they have not practiced even little bit of bhakti to ignite that lamp of bhakti. So it, it is a gradual process. It cannot happen just like that. Can we create sukrutis for them? Like I am giving some seed or something. Ah, yes, that's all. Mahaseva Satan Krupa. So, by allowing them to serve great souls, the Sukruti, unknowingly, it is especially unknowingly. If somebody serving some great sage unknowingly means they should have at least that um, mentality of serving others. If that is also not there, they only have the mentality of exploiting others. How will they serve? Some Past mentality will be there. With that past mentality, when they serve great souls, that creates a sukruti and it will lead to their bhakti in the future lives. So in that case, for us also, we also have anarthas, you know, finding like that. But if we physically work, as in we do some service, can we help ourselves also? Maybe? For what? I mean, to go towards our goal. No, physical service for what? I mean, any service, like. Any services which we are performing in bhakti or in bhakti, society? Bhakti, bhakti, bhakti. That is what we are supposed to do. Rishikya, yeah, Rishiki yeah. Yeah, sure. That is called bhakti. We have to engage all the senses in service of the Lord. When we are ready to do 24 by 7 only for the Lord, then we are, will, go, will be qualified to go back to Godhead. Right now we have so many other things to do. So we cater to many things. So we are here. We only cater to Lord when we are ready to go back to Godhead. But the question again is where are the services? Where? Where are the services? You can create services. There is no yes. delta of services. That's what they say. That's what Prabhupada Radhavogna books is. As long as one person is not, I mean, uh, not Krishna conscious, there is service. But it's not your um, capacity to always preach, preach. Right? No, not only preach. See, Radhavogna was saying preaching means the preacher he says that. But you are not a preacher. You cannot do that. You do other services. Yes, Bhakti is not only preaching. Yes. Shravanam, Kirtanam, is 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 focusing on Kirtanam aspect. You focus on other aspects. So me hearing lectures is a seva. Huh? Ah, hearing lecture is seva. Provided if you apply that, if you share with others. Ah, so then sharing again comes to preaching, right? Not necessarily. You don't have to do big big preaching. Sharing others means it is like uh, pro providing fair to servant for others to practice. You may not speak so much, but you act in such a way that others are inspired by you. Something like that. Nirupita prajapala sa jigma sati vai praja tatapi santva ye mamum nasmam stat patakam spray spray. We appointed this king. Pardon? Sorry? I thought you said something. Ah, no. We appointed this Vena king of the state in order to give protection to the citizens. But now he has become the enemy of the citizens. Despite all these discrepancies, we should at once try to pacify him. By doing so, we may not be touched by the sinful results caused by him. Appointed as the king, he desires to harm the citizens. Nevertheless, we should conciliate him so that his sin do not affect us. So he said that it is we enthrone him and he is uh, stopping us perform our duties. So we have the authority to dethrone him also. So by doing that, we will not be guilty at fault. By arguments, we will enlighten him. We will try to enlighten him by arguments. 
doing this we will not be touched by the sin otherwise we will become sinful because we have appointed him as the king of the citizens we will go to him we will talk to him we will insert good sense of knowledge by which we will change him so that we will be correct whatever mistake we did we correct it and then they say that if he does not listen we dethrone him if he does not accept we will kill him they are ready to do that hari krishna prabhu ji is it that some, if somebody has appointed the king and if the king is not good he is doing certain bad activities that karma will come to that the appointer also yes yes it will come if uh, i mean later on we see in the next chapter next a couple of chapters later prithumara says to the citizens that when a yagna is performed the performer the brahmanas were actually performing the sponsorer whether it is the king or the vaishyas and those people who assist who take part in it other people who are doing small small things everyone will get the benefit whoever sanctioning it whoever doing it whoever participating in it will get the result of it the same way here the brahmanas who made him the king they will also subject to the results yes it is so okay thank you prabhuji so we'll take a couple of minutes break then we will continue with the 12th verse correction